Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting Picking Spring Flowers and I'm sipping on some elderberry tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are chrome yellow, titanium white, fire red, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, Mars black, green oxide, and fluorescent purple. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes. I have a, let's get them straight here. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 12 round synthetic brush. And I have a number six round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium and large as we go through the painting process and of course you can switch those up if you'd like. If you're painting along with me you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes and down below this video in the video description I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna use are green and black. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a nice dark forest type of green color, so on the darker side, and I'm gonna be painting the entire canvas with that color. So I've pre-mixed my color so you can see where I'm headed. How I got to this was I used my green oxide with just a little bit of black paint in it and I just spun it around. So what this the black does is it's just really making myself a nice dark forest green type of color. You don't need to put too much black in it. The black will very easily take over. So I do suggest that you just kind of mix a little bit of the black in there at a time. And this is looking pretty good for me. So once you've got the color that you want, you're just gonna start painting the canvas. So I'm gonna be using a left to right type of brush stroke. You could certainly use any type of brush stroke that you would like. You could use a vertical brush stroke, you could use a side to side, you could use dots. Whatever brush stroke works for you to get a nice solid coat on here is totally fine because we're gonna be doing so many elements on top of this. It's okay even if you don't have a perfect coat in through here. So if you have some streakiness or you have spots that just don't look like they're fully executed, it's all gonna work out because we are gonna be having so many different elements on top of this. This is just acting as our base coat. It's gonna allow us to put some great dimension in the grass. It's gonna provide us with a nice neutral kind of color, dark neutral type of color behind our young flower picking girl. So you can certainly, you know, use this type of tone because I'm going for a nice, kind of natural color, one that we find out in out in Mother Nature's beauty. So because I'm using this, it's just gonna complement the whole thing and provide us with a great base to build all of our elements on top. And if you wanted to, you could certainly paint the edges or the sides of your canvas with this color. That'll provide you with a, a nice kind of frame around the canvas itself. And then once you're done, what I do is I just kind of like to go back and forth with my brush to give myself an even coat. But again, not totally necessary on this type of painting because we are going to be doing so many additional elements 
throughout the painting that if you do have some of those thin spots or thick spots it will really just work itself out nobody's going to notice it by the time you've done putting on all the grass and all the flowers and all the other stuff that we're going to be putting on so to get this done we are going to be using this same paintbrush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting the first layer to our grass so i'm going to be using my large bristle brush the colors i'm going to use are this dark green plus yellow and white and i do want to recommend that you make sure that your canvas is dry before you start this step it'll be a little bit easier so this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry or you can do as i did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way so what I'm really looking to do is start the texture on my grass with making it look like it's a little bit off in the distance where I won't have as much texture or it'll be smaller kind of texture. And then down towards the bottom of my canvas, I'm going to start um, making it look like there's longer pieces of grass. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to pre-mix myself a green that's a little bit lighter than this one. And I'll use that as my first step to making some textured grass. So I have already pre-mixed it so you can see where I'm headed. So this was my dark green color in through here and what I did was I added yellow and a touch of white to my dark green. So if this is my dark green color in through here, oops I just added a little bit of white without even thinking so just a teeny tiny bit of white in through there plus yellow. So the yellow is really going to turn it into a nice vibrant type of green and then the white will make it a little bit softer looking so it's not so um so it's not too yellow and it would give it a nice softness to it so this is about where i'm headed with my color so once you've got it uh where you want it what i'm going to do is just wipe my brush off on the side of my palette so i don't have too too much paint on my brush i'm going to start at the top of my canvas using a stippling or a dotting type of technique where my brush goes straight into my canvas and makes thousand little dots and then as i come down the canvas i will transition from dots to pulled up swipes that I'll be making for my for my um, for my brush stroke. I do not need to cover the canvas a hundred percent. So as I go through this process, what I will do is allow myself to kind of run out of paint on my brush. So that way I know that through experience, the more paint that I have, the more true that color will be and the less it will kind of take on the um, information that's underneath it. The more paint I have, the brighter it will be and the less it will see the stuff underneath. So I utilize that thought process or that knowledge to allow me to have some bright spots and some dark spots throughout this process, allowing for some of that undercoat to show. So this is one of those times where you can utilize the translucency of the paint in order to help you get a lot of textural effect throughout it. And you can watch mine as it dries. You'll notice that the thicker my paint is, the brighter that, that color will be. And then as I'm coming down almost about halfway, I'm going to start to pull almost like jab and pull up with my brush and I'll be doing it longer and longer as I get down towards the bottom but right now I'm kind of still jabbing at it a little bit just kind of um, giving myself all these little speckle dots and again if oops I must have had a little red on my brush there um, if some of the areas are thicker than others that's the that's the whole point of the process so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to still kind of jab and kind of pull up a little bit. This is where my transitional type of brush stroke is going to start to take place. And again, just kind of you could either jab up or down, whatever is a more comfortable kind of brush stroke for you. But just allowing for this um, different kind of textural brush stroke will start to make this grass look a little bit more in focus as it's coming down towards the viewer. So that's kind of what I'm going for is trying to allow for that visual effect to just start to emerge. We are going to be putting a lot more, 
detail within this grass and at the end at the bottom we're going to definitely and later we're definitely going to put even more single type of single type of pieces of grass but right now i'm just trying to give the illusion of this grass is coming closer and closer to us so you can see like now i'm using even longer strokes than i used like in the middle of here and as i get towards the bottom they're just going to be the longest so i keep just reloading my paint bringing it in this upward type of motion it doesn't have to go straight up i'm using little curves to my to my brush stroke and i'm just going to bring this all the way down to the bottom and then once you've got this done you don't have to labor over it too much just let it dry let it hap let whatever is going to happen happen because we're going to have lots more information on top of it and then we're going to use our piece of chalk for the next step so once you've got this first textural layer of your grass on you can put this large brush away take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to draw an outline for our girl i'm going to be using my chalk i do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step as well because it's easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is on a wet canvas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to guide you through a series of markers and we'll connect those markers and by the time we're done we'll have a nice simple outline that we'll be able to color in during the painting process. So I'm not going to go for any fine-tuned detail here, just some basic dots. We'll connect those and by the time we're done we'll be good. So you're going to want to find yourself about the center of your canvas and then go up from that about an inch. That's going to be the first marker that we make. I'm going to go to the right of that about three inches and then I'm going to come down maybe about a half of an inch to an inch and then I'm going to connect these two. These are going to represent the top of her shoulder area. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom and on the right hand side I'm going to come in about two inches, make myself a marker in through there and then I'm going to find about the center of my canvas at the bottom and come to the left of that about two inches. These don't have to be perfect down at the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these corners to these markers. This is going to represent just the side of her body. So she's a young person so it's not going to dip in too much at her waist or anything along that line but we'll have some movement in the skirt. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring this almost down straight in a, in a kind of straight line in through here and then I'll just give it a little bit of movement as it's coming towards this bottom marker in through here. So nothing major, just a little bit of movement so it's not a straight, straight line. And then on this side here, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to come pretty much almost straight down till I'm about here and then maybe it comes in just a little bit and then just buckles out a little bit and kind of gives a little bit of a wave down into the skirt down in through here. And again, nothing major. I'm going to consider right about here as her waist. She's leaning over, so we're going to put some arms on her now. So typically when I think of my own body and my own anatomy, like my elbow goes about to my waist. So if this is about where her waist is and I want to represent her elbows, what I would do is kind of come out directly from there. And if she's leaned over a little bit, maybe this one's a bit higher, maybe this one's a bit lower. So I'm going to have, we're not going to see all of her arms, we're just going to see to her elbows and maybe on this one we'll see a little bit more of the forearm where she's holding her basket. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to just bring this out just a little bit in through here. This is going to be inside the crook of her elbow and then I'm going to come down I would say if this is her waist about halfway between here and the waist and this is where the, bo the bottom side of her arm is going to come out and if you were to kind of take this line and swing it that would be about where the waist is and then I'm going to just kind of bring this up like this and maybe just a little bit where her where her forearm might go. This is most likely going to just get hidden by her basket but it's good to just have a little piece in there anyways. So then on this side same thing I'm going to just kind of round out this this shoulder area. I'm going to come down we're just going to see her her um, elbow on this one. I'm going to come about to this distance in through here and then just kind of curve this back up and meet the inside of the body something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put her head on. So I'm considering this to be a young person and typically on a young person their head proportionately is a little bit larger to their body than an adult. So if you wanted to change this into an adult you could make the head a little bit smaller than I'm making. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up 
from the center of the body in through here about almost halfway between here and my body maybe a little bit shy if this is about halfway I'm a little bit below there so somewhere in through there that gives you a good height and what I'm going to do I'm she's going to have long hair so this hair is going to um, in essence kind of connect her hat to her to her body so I'm going to give myself a couple of extension lines coming out of the body into here and again that'll that'll make up that'll be her her hair area this is going to be the top of her hat so now that I kind of know where the exterior edges of her head are or her hair that's going to be about as wide as the top of the hat is going to go so what I can do is I can take from this line and just kind of extend it up and through here I'm going to give myself a little bit of a curved line at a diagonal not going any higher than that and then just bring it back down in through here so this gives us a good shape to the top of the head and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go about halfway between here and here and go out to the right maybe at a little bit of a diagonal so somewhere in through here is going to be the edge of the hat over on this side and then on the left hand side I'm about halfway and my hat is diagonal like this so I'm going to go about two inches to the left over in through here so that's going to give me the edges of my hat and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give myself a nice pretty um, decorative edge or um, rim to the hat in through here and then just bring this across in a can be a wavy way it doesn't matter right now because we're going to be coloring all this in in a minute but something like this and then just maybe bring this up in through here all you really want to make sure is that this top area if you were to draw a line there that they would make sense so you wouldn't want one way up here and one way down here so just as long as those make sense and that's all I'm going to be doing for my outline oh actually let's let's outline her hair too so I'm going to just kind of come down from here and give myself a little kind of wavy line down at the bottom to tell me where I have her hair and then I'm going to put my chalk away I'm going to be using my medium brush for the next step so you can make any adjustments that you need to take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting the base coat for our girl I'm going to be using my medium brush the colors I'm going to use are brown and white and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be painting a base coat of the hair just with brown and then the hat and her dress I'll be doing with a tan color so I'm going to pre-mix myself a tan color and well, I've already magically done it but I'll show you how I got there so this is what I'm headed for so what I did was I just used some white paint and just a teeny touch of brown paint so I really just want this to be a little bit darker than white so that way when I do some highlights later I'll have room to do highlights because if I want a white dress I can't just start it white um, well I could but it it makes it easier if I start it like a little bit darker than white so it provides me with the opportunity to add highlights and shadows and have a lot of good dimensions so this is about where I'm heading you can clearly see that it's a little bit darker than white and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint in my hat and my dress with this color so you don't need to do any fancy um, brush strokes just bring it all the way to your chalk mark even if your chalk mark is still evident after this that's okay because you'll have opportunity to um, to get rid of it later you can ripple the edge of your hat if you want to and I'm just going right to the edge something like this and again no fancy brush strokes we're just looking for a nice um, a nice coat that we'll be able to add our details to later and while I have this um, tan oops while I have this tan color on my brush I'm going to go ahead and do her dress so the dress again I'm just going to be doing with this with this tan color so I can um, I'll, so I can allow for some highlights and shadows when I get to any area that I think I might need to know the difference um, between like her arm and the inside here you could if you wanted to or needed to you could leave a little um, a little bit of that marker in between not totally necessary but if you feel that you would want that you could certainly do that I'm going to just bring this all the way to the edge in through here and just make sure that I've got it all the way down to her elbow and again I'm not terribly concerned about it looking perfect right now just really looking to get a nice coat on there 
when I go to the area where her hair is, I'm just going to kind of use this um, messy type of brush stroke so that way w the hair can kind of overlap it and it looks nice and natural but when I go to the edges of her dress I'll go a little bit slower and just make sure that those are a little bit of a cleaner line but again doesn't have to be super clean we're gonna have some highlights and shadows that will um, allow for soft edges if you want to but it, you can certainly make these a little bit cleaner than where you have the, the hair coming out. And then again, just kind of going down this edge in through here. And then I just need to hit her other arm. And then what I'll do after I get the other, uh, so if you have streakiness too, if you see some light spots and dark spots throughout this process, again, it's okay because this is just the base coat for it. We'll be having the, um, the other stuff on there later. And again, where I feel that I'm gonna be hitting that hair, I can have some, some not straight or clean lines in through there. That'll make for that, that transition from the hair to the, to the body a little bit more natural. And then just slowing down and bringing it all the way to the edge in through here. Her forearm in here might totally get hidden by the basket, but again, I'm just gonna put a little bit of color in through here so if I do feel or while I'm going through that process, if I do want to leave a little bit of her forearm, I will have that, I'll have a little bit there to leave if I want to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put some brown paint on it for the hair area. This chalk mark will go away in just a second. I'm just going to load my brush with some brown paint and paint right over that. I'm going to go right up to the edge of my hat in through here and just kind of slow down a little bit. And if I bump into my hat, that's okay because we've got highlights and shadows and all that good, good stuff at the end to do. And then when I meet her body, I definitely want there to be um, some, some evidence of a little bit of movement. And so instead of having just a straight down line on the edge, you can always just bring out a couple of those pieces to make it look a little bit more natural. Um, Again, you know, that can also be taken care of when we do our details. I think I want her hair a little bit longer, so I'm just going to pull it down just a little bit over that um, dress color, which, again, is totally fine. <laughs> It'll make it look really nice and natural. And then what I'm going to do is once I've got this done, we're going to be using our large brush for the next step, and we'll be doing some little flyaway hairs and stuff um, on our future step, too. So this is looking pretty good to me. So I'm going to put this brush away take out my large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the second layer to our grass. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna be using are my light green, white, and yellow. And what I'm gonna be doing is very similar to the last step, which is gonna be a dotting, stippling type of effect at the upper portion and as I work my way down towards the bottom I'm going to be doing more of an upward type of brush stroke and then when we get down to the bottom we'll use some longer brush strokes down at the bottom. So I'm really just looking to add some more depth to this grass with a little bit more sunshine and I like to build it in these layers so that way I have the control and I don't over blend so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I've got my light green. I'm going to put a little bit of white paint on my brush with my light green. So I'm going to start up at the top and I'm going to be again doing these, this dotting type of effect. I don't want to color in the whole thing. I think that's the key here is to not color in the whole thing. Every time I go to pick up paint, like right now, I feel like I want to pick up a little bit of yellow and a touch of white on my dirty brush. So this way I can have these different tonal values. Maybe one area is a little bit yellower than the other. Maybe one area is a little bit greener than the other. And I'm going to be leaving these little bits of dark spots throughout the grass as well. Right now I'm going in for some of that light green with my dirty brush. So whatever remnants were on my dirty brush, I still had some yellow and some white. So I'm going to, in essence, kind of be alternating my light green, yellow, and white on my brush without washing my brush. So this way, again, I'll have these beautiful values that sometimes it's gonna look a little lighter. Like right now, I just picked up a little bit more white on my brush, and I'll get this area to look a little bit lighter. So we've got some 
texture, some dimension, all these beautiful things that are gonna, that you see in natural elements like this, we get to create by using these different values. We're in essence just using a whole bunch of different shades of green and I worked from the dark to the light. So now it's giving it this, these lighter kind of tips to the grass and I just kind of work it all through. I'm, I'm doing this around my, around my girl. So when you do it, if you bump into your girl, that's okay. We, we've got lots of steps left to go. I wanted to do it this way so we didn't have too much texture that we were trying to work through behind her. So I'm just gonna kind of bump into her hat, make sure that I've got some of this textural element around the edges. If I want areas to be lighter or darker, I can certainly work that out. Maybe it's a little bit darker as it's in front of her. So maybe I don't even, I haven't picked up more paint in, in a while. So this way it will, look like maybe there's more sunshine up at the top. So you can keep, you know, just elevating. I just put a little bit more white on my brush as it's drying. If I feel like I want some of these areas to be a little bit lighter, especially up towards the top of the canvas where it feels like it's just kind of drifting out into the meadow, you can certainly just kind of keep adding these little bits of lightness throughout it and keep it inconsistent. You don't necessarily want to have this all the way around it. You want to have those dark spots and those light spots so it adds that dimensional kind of element. And as I get down to about her shoulders, that's when I'm going to start adding these little kind of pulled up pieces. And again, I don't need to do a lot. I have very little bit of paint on my brush and I'm just starting to give a little bit more length to that grass by pulling it up like this. And again, the colors I'm using are my light green, yellow, and white. And I just kind of keep alternating. Like right now, I just picked up a teeny tiny bit of white paint with my dirty brush, and I can put a couple little pops of brighter pieces of grass in through here. I know I'm gonna have a big basket full of flowers here <laughs> in a couple minutes, so that's, I don't really need to do a whole bunch in through here, but you know, you just kind of keep playing with those, with those values and that texture. So again, I just picked up some of my light green plus a little bit of white. Maybe now I pick up yellow on my dirty brush. So maybe now I've got some, some shots of, of brighter yellow grass in through here and you can just kind of keep overlapping it and dotting it in through here is kind of like that medium length grass. And if you ever run into trouble, you can, like you feel like you did way too much, pick up that original dark green that we had. That will always help to bring you back into the darker region. So if you feel like you've um, lost some of that dimensional element, utilize that, that darker green to, to help you bring it back into the place where you want. So as I'm doing this, as I'm coming down towards this bottom, I just picked up more of my light green, maybe a teeny tiny touch of white paint, and I'm gonna be giving myself some longer pieces of grass. I also know that after I put my flowers on, I might end up putting a couple of singular pieces in between my um, flowers, so I know that that's coming too. So I don't necessarily need to overdo this at this time because again, I know I've got a lot of grass or a lot of flowers coming in a little bit. So I'm thinking that that's pretty good. I'm going to be using my, um, my medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this large brush away take out your medium brush. Yeah, that's looking like a pretty, a pretty bright springtime meadow. And again, just keep, I might keep fiddling with mine a little bit just to get these as bright as I want it. But it, once you feel like you're done, you can uh, put this large brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the basket. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm gonna use are brown, black, and white. And I might use a little bit of yellow or red if I want there to be like a little orangey tone to it, but that'll be in a little bit. <laughs> so I'm gonna definitely use black, brown, and red. So, or black, brown, and white. So I'm gonna start with brown paint on my medium brush. What I'm gonna, in essence, do is put a little, um, the handle to the basket kind of coming over her arm and then I'll give myself the shape of the opening and then we'll give the um, exterior shape and we'll color it in. So I'm gonna start right in the crook of her arm and through here and just give myself a curved 
line. I'm not concerned if it's perfectly um, colored in yet. I'm just doing a nice kind of thin coat so I can add um, some highlights to it in a minute. So that's going to give me my, my, my handle on this side. I'm going to put a little bit of a handle on this back side of her arm, which most likely is going to get covered by some flowers, but just giving yourself the um, the full shape of it is going to allow for you to build it the correct way or in a correct size. And then I'm going to give um, the exterior rim of it, just giving myself a like a oval type of shape. And clearly she's holding it to the side, so this would maybe come around on this side in through here. And again, a lot of this is going to get hidden by some flowers, but we're just building it in a, in a good size. And I'm going to bring this maybe down in through here, bring this side down as well in through here, and then just kind of close off the bottom at a similar angle to whatever I have the basket at. And then I'm gonna give this side a nice thin coat of brown paint. I'm not gonna um, paint it with a heavy coat because I'm gonna add some highlights and shadows in just a second after. So I want it to dry kind of on the faster side. So just a little bit of brown will get that coat on there. And while this is kind of drying, I'm gonna color the center part black. So I'm not even gonna wash my brush. I just picked up a little bit of black paint Black is great for covering things, so I know I didn't really need to um, wash my brush because black was going to overpower that brown that I had on my brush. So sometimes you do things in a, in a fashion where you, you know what's going to happen. Like I knew that, that that black would overpower it, so I didn't need to wash it. And I'm a lazy brush washer anyways, <laughs> so I'm just going to bring this all the way to the end like this and just color in this whole middle area with my black paint and again most of this is going to get disguised by our flowers that are going to be popping out of this basket she's she's collected a lot of flowers on her on her flower picking journey so now what i'm going to do i'm going to use a little bit of this black to add a shadow on this bottom and right hand side of the basket i'm going to have this kind of like a wicker basket so i'm going to use a lot of carefree kind of strokes in the direction that i want the appearance of the weave of the wicker to go so i just have black on my brush right now well there might be a little remnants of brown too but the black is overpowering right now and i'm just bringing this on the bottom the right side and the bottom and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start kind of pulling it to the right in the direction, kind of a curved direction to imply the the um, the shadowy areas between the, the pieces of wicker. And then I can do the same thing, maybe a little bit in a vertical type of way also. I'm gonna have my light over here on the left-hand side. So that's why I'm concentrating these um, streaks on the right-hand side. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush so I can add a little bit of highlight over here on the left-hand side. So I'm definitely gonna be using brown and white. And if I feel that it's too soft of a color, I might actually end up using a little bit of um, red and yellow to make it almost like an orangey tone. So I have brown and white on my brush right now. I'm going to add a bit of a highlight up in through here like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing over on this left hand side. So bringing it down here and I'm in essence kind of reversing what I did over on the right hand side. And then I'm going to just kind of bring my streaks in this direction. I'm reloading my brush with a little bit of brown and white, giving myself some little vertical or yeah, vertical streaks in through here, and then just kind of getting them to all talk together, maybe going back and forth as, as it's drying, maybe a little bit more on this edge in through here. I'm thinking that that's pretty good. I was think considering using a little bit of the um, red and white, but I'm digging the color that this is making right now. So I'm just going to roll with this, put a little bit of extra white up in through here. And if you felt that you wanted to do anything else, just make sure that you're clean up all of your lines, make sure that you've got a good um, assortment of those colors on there. And then you can do any little fiddling and adjusting you want. We're going to be using our large brush for the next step. So you can put your medium brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step.
All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the first layer for our flowers. I'm going to be using my large brush. The colors I'm using are purple and red. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix myself a nice magenta color, and that's going to be the base color for my flowers. I'll be using red later to make them really pop, but this magenta is going to give them a nice um, deep tonal value underneath. So I've pre-mixed it so you can see where I'm headed. This is my magenta that I'm working towards. I got there by using red and some of my purple. So I'm just kind of mixing them together. It's more parts purple than it is red because the red really takes over easily and I definitely want it to look different than my red. So more purple will definitely steer it into that magenta place. So once you've got the color that, that you've desired, I'm gonna start with just a very little bit on the tip of my brush because I'm gonna be starting at the top of my canvas making some dots for my small flowers. So I just wanna make sure I don't have too much paint on my brush, I just wiped it off on my paper towel. So I'm gonna be doing really tiny little speckles up at the top, and as I get closer to her or down towards the bottom of my canvas, I'm gonna be making my marks larger and having them more full. So right now I'm just using my um, tiny bit of my magenta, and I'm just gonna really kind of speckle in these kind of patches of flowers. You don't need to do it the whole thing. You can just kind of give yourself these little tiny areas of the flowers. It doesn't have to be 100% covered the whole way. Just kind of give yourself these areas. This is how it's gonna make it look more like a wild patch of flowers as opposed to like a nursery where the flowers are all um, planted in a row. This will just look like this young person has just stumbled upon this beautiful field of wild flowers and she's just having fun picking them and she's gonna bring them home to mom maybe or her dad or she's gonna bring, or maybe she's just gonna keep them all for herself. Who knows what she's gonna do with them. So as I get down to around her head this is where I'm gonna start to maybe push a little bit harder, maybe use a little bit more paint on my brush and this way they'll look almost like they're a little bit larger in size. As I work my way down towards the bottom of the canvas, I'm definitely going to be allowing for more shapely kind of flowers. I know that I want her to look like she's holding a big bunch of flowers in through here and her basket is gonna have flowers. So if I am gonna put flowers in the grass in this area, I'm gonna just kind of keep them away from where I want her, her bunch of flowers to go. And then at the bottom, I'll put those in a minute. But right now that I'm in this vicinity, I'm gonna put the ones around her arms. So I want these to look really close to us and in focus. So I'm really just gonna kind of mush my brush around, giving myself almost like this large mass of, um, of the flowers and you can even bump them into her arm but it, to me these are kind of on the other side of her arm so you can certainly have them overlapping but when we go to do the um, the details of her we'll be able to um, you know you'll want to be able to touch that edge and then when we finalize our flowers you can certainly put more in front of her arm if you wanted to but right now that's about all I'm going to do for that one over on here, I'm gonna put them everywhere. <laughs> so I'm just gonna kind of lay out the exterior footprint of where I want them. As I'm doing the ones that are outside of the basket, you know, that are flip flopping over, I wanna leave a couple of little peekaboo spots where you can see the grass underneath. So as I'm conscious of that as I'm doing this. I'm just kind of almost moving my brush in like a circular type of motion, but leaving myself some spaces in between. When I get to the, um, the, uh, the handle of the basket, I can certainly put a flower right on top of that. I can put flowers right inside my basket. I'm gonna put flowers kind of overlapping the edge of my basket in through here. Definitely a whole bunch underneath her, her arm. Maybe I've got a couple kind of coming out over in through here. And again, I'm just kind of moving my brush in a circular type of fashion getting that in through there. Then I'm gonna put some, I think I'm gonna almost cover the top of her arm in through here, putting some in through here. And again, I don't wanna overdo it. I wanna just make sure that I still have room 
to have some peekaboo spots and I'm going to be having some additional dimension on top of them. So that's that's looking pretty good to me. I'm thinking that that's pretty good. Then I'm going to move down to the ones in the grass down below. So again, I'm going to be doing more of like a mush kind of um, brush stroke. I know I'm going to have lots of different textural elements on top of this, but I don't want to take away all of my grass. So I'm leaving myself some spots. You can overlap her dress a little bit if you want to, but again, we'll be doing a final final kind of detail to the um, to the dress so that way you you know if you do bump into it on purpose or by accident you'll be able to make it look more finessed when we put the other details on and that's about all I'm going to be doing for this step I'm going to be using my medium brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can put your large brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting highlights and shadows on our hat and our dress. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I know I said I was gonna use my medium brush, but I changed my mind. <laughs> I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are white, brown, black, and, I'm, and the tan color that we created earlier. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be putting shadows on first. This is gonna tell me the, the dip in my hat and how the hat is kinda of, kind of be shadowed on the right hand side. It's gonna give me some shadow on the underside of her arms and the, the small of her back. Maybe a little bit of shadow in the creases of her dress as it's coming down. And then we're gonna do some highlights on her rear end, on her shoulders, and on the hat as well. So I'm gonna start with my shadows. I'm gonna start on the hat with some brown paint on my brush. I want this shadow to go, I'm gonna have a decorative band on the hat in a little bit, but right now I'm just gonna kind of give myself a line in through here where I feel that it would be the darkest, and then I'm gonna just kind of rub it up this right hand side bringing it all the way to the edge of that hat and then maybe a little bit in through here. So something like that. And then I'm gonna do the same, a similar kind of thought um, in what I feel would be some creases down in this bottom area. So I just have a little bit of that brown left on my brush and I'm just gonna kind of rub it out a little bit on this side. I need to reload with a little bit more brown because I want a little bit of a dip coming through the hat back in through this direction. So once I've got my shadows on there and I've designated this center area to be kind of the darkest, what I can do is I start picking up my tan color. So I didn't wash my brush, I just picked up my tan color and I can get these sections to just kind of blend a little bit more in with one another and make sure that they are talking well together. So just picking up my tan, making sure that the, the, um, the lighter section or the mid-tone talks to the dark area and if you feel like you need to add more of the dark feel free to do so and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up some white paint so my white is going to be where I have my my highlight so I'm going to have a big highlight here on the top of my hat I'm going to have one over here on the left hand side of my hat somewhere in through here and I will get them to blend in in a second just kind of designating where I want them to go I want a little highlight in through here, maybe this is gonna be a little bit of a highlight in through here. And then once I've designated where they're going, I start working on blending them in. I could also have a little bit of a highlight over on the edge of the hat in through here as well, maybe a little bit over in through here. So if you have a lot of white paint on your brush right now, just wipe it off on your paper towel so you can get that white to just kind of blend into that mid-tone. And then in a second, I'll pick up some more of that mid-tone or that tan color to get it to blend in. So right now I'm just picking up a little bit more of my tan to get that white to blend in to the highlighted area. And then once you've got your highlights and your shadows designated on the hat, you just kind of keep tweaking it until you feel like you've got good enough dimension on it. If you need to amp up your highlight a little or get those colors to blend a little bit better, feel free to do so. But I'm gonna move on to my dress and do the dress in a similar way. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna start with my shadow colors. On here, I'm actually gonna use black and brown as my shadow colors. So I have black and brown on my brush because I know I have dark hair. So I'm gonna put um, black and brown as the shadow underneath 
that hair so it looks different than the hair itself so I've just got my black and my brown and I'm just kind of rubbing in a little bit of a shadow underneath there definitely a little shadow on this back side of the arm in through here so just getting that on there and maybe a little bit at the bottom of this elbow in through here and you can also take if you've got a lot of paint on your brush like I feel like I have a lot on my brush I just wiped it off I'm noticing I have some of my magenta color in there we'll hide that with some paint and then I'm just kind of rubbing my shadow into that lighter area of the arm the back I'm gonna put a shadow down here as well but I wanted kind of a distinct shadow from the hair um, so I'm gonna put a sh softer shadow on the crook of the back in a minute but while I have these dark colors the black and the brown on my brush I'm gonna do a similar shadow on this left hand side so maybe a little bit more black so it doesn't get lost in the lost in the darkness so a little bit of black and brown give this shadow at the bottom side of the arm wipe it off on my paper towel and then just rub it into the underside of that arm or the back side of that arm and then of course you can pick up a little bit of your tan to get it to blend in if you're having um, any uh, parts that need to blend in a little bit more from that dark to the mid-tone you just pick up the mid-tone and get it to blend in do the same thing over on this arm. Just pick up a little bit of my mid-tone to get the, that middle area to blend with the dark area. So something like that. My, that little spot of magenta is almost gone. And then I'll pick up some white to do those shoulders. So white paint to do my shoulders. Give myself that nice bright highlight right up at the tippy top to make sure that that sunshine looks like it is definitely illuminating the top of her shoulders and then I'm going to pick up without washing my brush I just picked up some brown to give myself this um, eh, maybe a tiny bit of black brown and black I just don't want this shadow in the crook of her back to be as dark as the shadow from her hair so just making sure I kind of blend it pretty quickly just to give her the shadow um, but not at necessarily as dark as the shadow from the hair and then I'm picking up some of my tan to make sure that that blends in so I did my shadow and then blending it in with that mid-tone of the tan I'll make her butt pop out in a minute with some highlights but first I'm but I'll make her butt pop out but first I'll talk about some more <laughs> Sorry, my head goes wacky every now and again. I'm just putting a little bit more shadow in through here so this dips in just a little bit more. I'm gonna put some shadow in her dress too. So right now I'm picking up brown plus my tan and I'm gonna put some shadows in through here to give me the flow of that dress. So this is just almost gonna show you the, the creases in the fabric. So this is just adding some movement. I'm now picking, picking back up some more tan and just getting the, these creases to soften with that mid-tone tan color. And then once I've got them on here, I can start adding some highlights to them to make areas um, like maybe the center area pops out even more. So wherever you want it to dip in, you'll put a shadow. Where you want it to pop out, you put a highlight. So right now I'm picking up white paint to get her butt to pop out a little bit more. So just white paint on my dirty brush will get this area to pop out a little bit more and then just blending it out into the uh, neighboring area. So just a little bit of white paint gets this part to, to pop out a little bit and then I just get it to blend. I blend it up into my shadow area and if you run into trouble, you start picking up that mid-tone and that'll, that'll help you to, to blend it. And then I'm also gonna put a little bit of lightness down at the bottom of the skirt, right in through here. So this is still just white paint and it's gonna allow me to allow this bottom part of the skirt to look like it is coming towards the viewer because it's getting brighter and brighter. And then I would just kind of keep fiddling with this, just wiping my brush off on my paper towel occasionally if I need to. I would also probably step back, let it dry for a minute. If I wanted extra highlights, like maybe over on the edge of the bottom of the skirt to make this looks like it's catching a little bit more of that sunshine, you can play with the intensity of how that skirt is moving with those light spots and dark spots and then you just kind of keep playing with it and once you're all set we are going to be using this same 
brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our hat and our hair. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, yellow, red, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a nice kind of chestnut brown type of color to use on the hair, as well as I'll use that same color on this little decorative band on my hat. And if I feel I wanna use it elsewhere, I certainly will. <laughs> so what I'll do is I pre-mixed myself the color that I'm going for. So here it is right in through here. So how I got to that was I used a little bit of brown, a touch of red. You don't need a lot of red. The red can really overpower the color and yellow. So the red and yellow makes orange and it will mix in with that brown. I think I need a little bit more. I was a little bit shy on those colors there. So a little bit more red, a little bit more yellow. Um, the, the red and the orange, or the red and the yellow are adding orange into my brown, which is making this beautiful mid-tone chestnut kind of color that I'm gonna utilize as the, the highlights, in essence, for the hair and make it look nice and, and dimensional. So now that I've got this color, this is looking very pretty to me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use it in the band of my, my hat up and through here. So I'm just really gonna put one kind of streak going across this part that dips like that. And then I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white to add a little bit of highlight on the top of this band. So while it's still wet, just kind of putting in a little bit of that highlight. And then I'm going to, um, actually, I like that color. I think I'm gonna put a tiny bit in my basket too. So I just picked up some more of that chestnut kind of color. I think I wanna add, oh well, yeah. So sometimes when you when you see the color in one spot and if, if, if it's working for you, just add it in other places. Like I feel it, it was gonna add a, a nice kind of wood tone to my, um, to my basket here. So just add it a little bit in through there. Yeah, it makes it look like a newer a newer basket, I guess. Yeah, that looks pretty. All right, so I'm gonna go back to here, washing and drying my brush, I'm gonna do her hair. But what I need to do first is I'm gonna add a shadow underneath her hat. So I'm gonna, I washed and dried my brush, I'm picking up a little bit of black paint. So I'm going to kind of underline that hat. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull down some of this darkness as if the hat is kind of casting a shadow on her hair. I don't need to do a lot of this, but definitely a little bit at the top is gonna to give you some great dimensional elements to it. And then once I've got that, then what I'll do is start picking up my chestnut kind of color in order to give myself the, um, the colors throughout the hair. I didn't wash my brush, so I probably still had a little bit of the black left on there. I want to have this hair kind of coming lighter as it as it comes towards this left hand side. So I'm just going to kind of build my way to that. So right now just picking up my um, chestnut kind of color. And this is where you would start to pull out a couple of stray pieces. So if I wanted some stray pieces around, you know, coming out the bottom of the hat or maybe looking like the wind is taking her hair a little bit. You'll be able to see this better when I start adding white to the mixture um, and giving myself some lighter uh, little highlight pieces. But just bringing this color down in through here, giving it a little bit of a curve, like it's you know curving around her back, and I'm just providing you know some great dimension to it, leaving some of that dark brown up in through here. And once I've got it pretty well set in the area that I want, making sure I come all the way down to that shadowy area that we put to, so that way it looks like it's fully painted. It's looking pretty good, maybe a little bit over on this arm in through here. This is where you can start overlapping too into like the arm section and stuff like that, so it looks like you've got some natural pieces of hair coming out in through there. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start picking up on my dirty brush a tiny bit of white paint, so not a lot at all, this is where I'm gonna be able to get those beautiful light streaks of hair that are just gonna kind of cascade down the side and maybe pop out a little bit of sunshine 
in through this. And if you feel like it goes too light on you, just start picking back up that um, the, the brown color that you created or pick up more brown itself. Whatever that color combination is that works for you. I just picked up again my, my chestnut color plus a little bit of white so that way I don't go too light too fast and this way I can provide myself with some, some texture to it and I can just kind of make it look nice and soft. You can even just kind of pull it down in these longer brush strokes and then just keep fiddling with it. If I want it to look like it's kind of blowing down or coming up over this back side, I just kind of pull it over in that direction in through there. And then you might want it to dry and add some layers to it. So whatever works for you, I just picked up a little bit more brown and white as opposed to the chestnut color, just so I can get a little bit more tone, tonal value change down in through here. So you can certainly keep fiddling with those colors as much as you want. And once you've got it, just, you know, sit back, look it up for a minute, let it dry, see if there's anything more that you want to do. And then we're going to be using our uh, medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this beautiful hair and your hat done, you can put, or put the small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing our second step to our flowers, or our second layer to our flowers. I'm gonna be using my medium brush, and I'm just gonna be using red. So when it comes to red type of flowers, I love to use different tones throughout the process so you can really see the richness of the red. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'm starting up at the top of my canvas and I'm gonna be dotting in a similar pattern, but I don't need it to be exactly on top of each and every one of these covering it 100%. So really, I'm just gonna kind of dot in a, in a similar way. I, before we used our larger brush for this um, process, now I'm gonna be using this brush. So if you're using different brushes, it will allow you to get a little bit different marks from one area to the next. You could even go outside of that original area that you had. So now we've got some different colored red flowers. So maybe, you know, you expand your footprint a little bit, but just kind of adding these little tiny red dots. And again, it's when, it, when we're working like in a dark, when we're working from this dark to light, you don't always see as much of that um, tonal change. It's not always so obvious, but once it starts to dry and you start to see all those three 3D elements to it, like I didn't cover up all of my magenta, so now I'm going to have some dark little areas and some brighter red areas. And that's what's going to make it look really natural and have some good pop and some good, you know, extra elements to it that are going to make it believable you know you don't have to always you know just go in the same area with the same color you really just want to have this magic that happens throughout throughout the um throughout nature which is just providing all of these different tones and stuff so as i'm coming into these larger flowers maybe i push a little bit harder maybe now that i'm in here maybe i start to give myself you know more areas in between so you can see those um those little darker spots so i'm not going to color the whole thing in a hundred percent as i'm coming over into here maybe i've got some little flowers in through there maybe i've got a big one over here and a big one over here so i'm still using that um, circular type of brush stroke but not overdoing it again allowing for some of that those darker notes to still um, show through even as it comes in through here. Maybe I'm, you know, still using that that circular type of brush stroke, but now maybe I even go outside of that original footprint. So maybe I've got a little bit of extra red stuff coming down the sides. So just again, have fun with it. We'll be putting some extra detail on these in the next step, but right now this red is just providing me with this additional. Um, layer of color so so it adds to that extra realistic 
feel to it. And then again, if you want to pop any in front of that skirt, since we're done doing the skirt now, that would make a lot of sense. Like she's walking through through this beautiful meadow and maybe, you know, a couple of those flowers are cut, catching the edge of her skirt. So that would make a lot of sense. And then we're going to use our large brush and our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put the medium brush away, take out your large brush and your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our flowers and our grass. I'm gonna be using both my large and my small brush to do this, and I'm gonna be doing this in a very loose, carefree, impressionistic type of style to tie everything together. What I'm gonna be doing is up at the top, I'm going to be finishing all these little flowers with maybe a nice pink layer, maybe a little bit of white for some highlight, even my little grass in through here. I'm gonna incorporate a lot of little tiny dots so this is really soft and out of focus and far away. And then as I get down, further down into the canvas, I'll be putting you know more little tiny tips of highlights on these flowers in through here. I'm gonna save these flowers for last because I'm gonna put the most detail in them and they're gonna be the brightest, but I'll be putting some longer pieces of grass in through here and some in between some of these flowers just so they have some dimension. And then we'll be putting some highlights uh, and with the, the grass, I'll be using my small brush and the highlights on these flowers in through here. So the colors I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use my magenta and my red but I'm also gonna use white. I'll also use my light green color and some possibly some yellow to add some um, textural, some additional texture on the, the grassy stuff up here. And then I'm gonna make a like a two shades of pink. One is gonna be with my magenta. I'll add white, make a little bit lighter shade there, and I'll take my red and make a shade of pink as well. So that way, when I go to do my highlights on all of these flowers, I'm using those base colors and making them lighter, which is making those pink, those versions of pink. And that's gonna, again, add to the dimensional element so I don't just add white highlights on them and make them all, you know, flat looking. If I can build my way to the lightness with varying shades, that makes it look more natural. So what I'm gonna do before I start whipping out the, the textural elements and finishing these flowers and grass, I'm gonna pre-mix those two shades of pink. So what I did, I just took my magenta and I added a little bit of white paint to it. So I'm just making myself a lighter version of my magenta and then I did the same thing for my red. So I took a little bit of my red and added a little bit of white paint to it. So this way I have a lighter version of my red. So that way when I go to do my highlights, I have lots of options to choose from. I have my pink, I have my red, I have my yellow, my white, my light green. So I can use all those colors to add these highlights and dimensional elements onto it. So I'm gonna start with my large brush and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start up at the top of my canvas, I'm gonna work on some of those flowers. So I'm putting my pink plus white. So I'll call it pink if it's the red and the white, and I'll call it light magenta if it's the light magenta. <laughs> so I've got the pink plus white on my brush, and I'm really just gonna kind of start tapping in up in this, up in this top area some of these really soft, highlights to my flowers. I can even bring it into these areas where there wasn't even flowers to begin with. Maybe these are just, you know, little duller flowers that I that Mother Nature is allowing to, to show up in this area. So again, just popped on a little bit of my pink plus white. I think now I'm gonna pick up some of my light magenta plus white without washing my brush and just start to bring in a, a different kind of tone to some of these to some of this textural kind of element. And before I go down too far in my canvas, I am going to add some brighter um, grassy pieces up top, which will be with my um, yellow and white or my light green and white. So I think that's pretty good as far as adding those in through there. I'm picking up a tiny bit of my light green, yellow, and white 
on my brush. I didn't wash my brush. I really want all of these colors to, to talk to each other. This is a lighter version of my, of my grass that I had initially. So this is gonna, again, just add more elements, more dimension to this entire area. And again, I'm not overdoing it. I'm really just touching the, the tip of my brush in here, making sure I've got some brightness, making sure that I've got all of these beautiful elements that are gonna scream springtime. And if I want a little bit extra over in through here, and again, you can make yours as bright as you want it. You can pop in some additional red, you can pop in some additional pink, whatever is speaking to you. That's looking pretty good to me and through here, maybe a little bit on here. I think I am gonna pick up a little bit more of my red in a second here. I'm digging this, but I'm feeling like I want a little pop of red, so I'm not washing my brush. I just picked up some additional red just to pop a little bit of those dark, you know, more vibrant red tones into here. And that's the way that I do it. I would just sit here and play with it and say, oh, well, that, that looks pretty, but I wish I had a little bit more of that red in there. And then, you know, you just kind of keep, um, keep adjusting it. So now I just picked up a tiny bit of white and I, you know, a little bit brighter here, a little bit brighter there, and you just keep fiddling. So that's what I would do to the top region as I work my way into this, um, into this lower region, now I'm gonna start adding maybe some, some additional pieces to the grass. So I'm washing and drying my brush because I know I have a lot of that red or pink or light magenta on it. So I just washed and dried my brush. I'm picking up some of my light green plus white on my brush just to make sure that I have enough brightness in my grass. This is gonna add those final little pieces in, in between to make sure that I've got enough vibrancy, enough sunshine poking through on the tips of these grass. And then as I work my way down towards this bottom region, I'm gonna switch brush. I'm gonna pick up my small brush. So I have my light yellow plus white, and you could use a little bit of yellow. So light yellow, yellow, and white. <laughs> and again, this is just gonna add these beautiful sunshine pieces of grass just popping their head in between. Maybe you've got some coming out in between here. And any combination of the light green really will work. And if you're not able to see the, the tonal change, then maybe you need a couple pieces of darker grass. The darker grass will help to um, make you see it amongst the lighter grass as well. So it's all, you know, depending on how dark you've made um, your, your base coat. But right now I've just got, I'm using the light green, yellow and white to give myself these beautiful bright pieces of grass just kind of peeking out between these flowers. You can bump into the flowers if you want to. You can have them coming in between. And again, this is just helping with that natural element to it. Maybe I've got a couple pieces in front of her skirt, something like this. But I know when I go to put it in front of her skirt because I have a light base underneath there, these pieces will definitely be pretty darn light. So if you want to, I just picked up some of my base color green, that dark green that we made originally. This will help to kind of unify these, these tones of grass with the grass next to it. If you wanted some in front of her skirt like that, that's totally up to you. And then you just kind of keep fiddling with your light green and yellow and white to get the rest of those bright pieces in there. And then once you've got that done, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And I'm gonna finish up these beautiful flowers that are closest to us. So washing and drying my brush. And this is gonna be a combination of my red, my, two, my pink, my light magenta, and white. And in my head, I'm assuming that these are kind of like a wild carnation type of flower that I want these tops to be the lightest. So I'm gonna start with just a little bit of red and my pink on my brush. So I have red and pink, and I'm just gonna give myself these kind of circular type of brush strokes that are just really almost giving me, I guess you could think of them as like little wild roses if you wanted to, just giving myself a little bit of um, this fun curved type of petal around the edges. 
you know, you can pick where you want. They can be looking straight at you. They can be lo looking at them from the side. You can have just little tips of lightness on the tops of them. They can overlap each other. So don't feel obligated to make yours exactly as mine. I'm just really using a curved type of brush stroke to give the illusion that these flowers have little curved petals to them. But you want to, you know, make sure that you represent as much as you want to represent in it. I'm going to pick up some of my light magenta now. I didn't wash my brush. I'm just going to kind of pop in a couple of those little um, petals that are going to have that that uh, little magenta appearance to them. Maybe I've got a couple on the top up here. Maybe these ones we're seeing them from the side. And just as I go towards the lighter colors, what I'm doing is I'm taking up less real estate on that flower. So as I, I'm not coloring in the whole thing. I'm just really coloring in a little piece of it. And the lighter I go, the less of the flower I paint. So I'll do the same thing over on this side. I start with some uh, red and pink and just kind of get them in motion with uh, my little curvy type of lines. If I want it to look like a rose or a carnation, I just give it those short um, curved type of edges to it and they can certainly build on top of each other, something like this. And then I'm gonna pick up some of my, magenta, my light magenta to give myself a little bit of edges on the top side. And I want the top top of this and the outside to be the lightest. So that's what I'm kind of working towards. And then I can add these highlights down below. We'll add a bright pop of white in a minute, but right now I'm gonna just follow the same process down here, which is red and pink. And then I'm just gonna kind of give myself some nice pretty tips to some of these flowers. And again, you don't have to do the whole thing. I'm just adding this beautiful lightness. Maybe these are these represent tulips to you. You don't have to do the same flowers I'm doing. I'm really just doing an impressionistic type of flower. I'm not, I you know, in my head I'm saying, well, they kind of look like carnations. They might, you know, maybe they look a little bit like roses too. So you can certainly have fun with, you know, whatever yours end up, maybe yours end up looking like poppies. So I just really am kind of following the idea that I want it light at the top. I want these little pops of color to have their own variation to them. Now I'm picking up a little bit of my magenta, light magenta, just giving little tips on the tops of some of these just so we can have that, um, it elevated to that brightness up at the top like this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make the tops of the ones that she's holding the brightest so they look like they are the in the focal point. So I'm just going to uh, wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up a tiny bit of white paint and this is where I'm going to pop in these beautiful little highlights right along the edge. And if the white is too white for you, then use it with your pink. Use it with your magenta. I just picked it up with my pink just to give myself these real beautiful little edges. I want her flowers, when you look at it from a distance, I want her flowers to stand out before the ones at the bottom do. So that's why I'm allowing these ones to be brighter with that bit of white in them is going to make them, or that lighter version is going to make them more of a focal point than the ones down at the bottom. And then you just keep playing with it. So right now I just keep picking up my white and, and pink, giving these edges in through here, their do highlights. And then I would wait for it to dry, step back, look at it from a distance, see if it's everything I had imagined and hoped it would be, and then fiddle with it all I want. And then we're gonna be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your beautiful flowers done, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna go bottom left on this one. I'm using my small brush and black paint. I sign mine with my initials, but you can certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine because it's your painting. You get to sign it however you'd like. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful springtime floral image. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.